Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Ryzen processors from AMD, which they've added a little code name on the end called the XT. So you have the 2600, and I'm already saying the numbers wrong. So this is going to be a great video today. 3600 XT. Then we have 3800 XT and the 3900 XT. So the 3600 XT is going to come in around the 249 mark, both GBP and USD, and is still six cores, 12 threads like it was before. Um, and then we have the 3800 XT around the 399 mark, both GB, GBP and USD. And this one is the eight core 16 thread one, and then the 3900 XT, still as it was before, 12 um, cores, 24 threads, going to come in around the 499 mark. Now they've had a little bit of a boost uh, with the maximum single core frequency, but things are probably going to be a little bit healthier around the middle loading sort of uh, point. Uh, and you also, to be fair, actually, before we move into the meat of it, because that's exactly where I was going to end up, I think it's probably best that we just move straight into the meat of the review. Okay, so I have done the testing on these, but I'm looking for the box, but I have actually, for the first time, got the 3950X in the graph as well, because AMD sent me a 3950X, so I could get it tested both stock and overclocked to have it in my graphs. It gets brought up on all the reviews, people think I've purposely taken it out or something like that, but if I haven't done the testing myself, it's just not in the graph. It's just the way it works. So AMD were very kind, so I could send one, to send one so that we could have it, so that you could see it uh, in comparison to this as well. Might even do a little dedicated video on it if enough of you put a heart or something in the comments underneath. But you've seen it all before anyway. So with these, one thing I will say is you do need to make sure that you're at least on Windows 1903. But if you're gonna be uh, building a new rig with one of these, then you've obviously got 1909, which is easy enough to get out there. Or if you do the most recent at the time of going to date, there is the Windows 2004 update. Some people have been having a little uh, bit of issues with that. With the test rig that I've been using today, I've not experienced any issues at all. Um, the other thing I will say is I am using the ASUS formula and uh, the 3600 XT was fine, but the 3800 XT and the 3900 XT did require the uh, 2103, so 2103 BIOS update for it to get past the post-processing stage. So when it's starting up and you see all the numbers flicking around on the motherboard with the formula, it did need the most recent BIOS to be able to do these. Now, this is at that point when people are going to start saying things like, oh, well, what happens if my board hasn't got that when I buy it and I buy it with one of these? Well, the, actually, the board BIOSes now do come with the BIOS uh, renamer on them as well. And essentially, you can do a BIOS flashback around the back. So you download the BIOS, put it on an empty USB stick, do the BIOS renamer, and it literally changes it to C8, as in the number 8, and then F. Uh, and you put it in the back of the board where the BIOS... Uh, it's highlighted and you just press the BIOS flash button, not the BIOS clear button, but there is a dedicated, it's like a little, um, almost like a recycling logo. Press and hold it and once the blue starts to flash, it's doing your BIOS for you and you don't actually have to have CPU in it to even be able to do that. Uh, a lot of the Asus boards do it, but the other manufacturers have kicked in with their own version as well. So with those sort of things, it can make upgrading things a little bit easier. I know I'm covering old base for a lot of people, but anyway. Now the other thing, uh, with all of the graphs that I'm going to show you today, you are going to see some overclock results. So I might as well just talk to you about the overclock results straight away. And then when we get into the graphs, you're gonna see what's going on. They kind of went from the lower cores and then the maximum overclocks managed to step down a little bit. But the star of the day for me personally was the 3600 XT. This is the first Ryzen processor I have ever been able to overclock to run faster than its maximum single core B 
boost frequency with normal cooling. So yes, I was using a H150 with some turbojet fans on it, uh, but in reality, I didn't particularly need it for this one. But uh, so the maximum all core frequency on this one is three points, sorry, 4.6. I actually managed to get it running all cores at 4.65 at 1.35 volts. Uh, and to be honest with you, once you push past that voltage point, you, you, you get problems where the system will just start to shut down. And it's not necessarily heat, and because of this board, it's not power either. It's just an instability problem. The, the, it just didn't like any more volts. So uh, we found, or I found, uh, 1.35 was a really nice point to stop with the voltage on this for both heat reasons and, like I said, stability reasons, because raging them with loads of volts and normal cooling is just uh, not going to get you anywhere. Um, and like I said, above the maximum all-core frequency, it's the first time I've ever been able to get that stable. And when I say stable, I actually mean blender stable, full benchmark stable as well. So it would pass prime. It would pass uh, an extreme 4K blender test. Our blender test has uh, 4 million polygons. And uh, with this one, it was taken... I can't actually remember how long it was taken, but it was taken a good... It was over half an hour, I think. So it's a good incredibly um, stressful test for this and it managed to pass it. With this one we managed to get it running at 4.6 all core. Now this is a little bit down because the single core boost is 4.7 but it's uh, the all core was flicking around the kind of 3.8 3.9 mark so it was a decent decent overclock for this one as well and then this one despite my best efforts I only managed to get it running all core at 4.55. So, uh, oh, and these were both running at 1.4 volts. They, they were getting up into the uh, very high 70 degrees marks, and that was even though we had it with an AIO. Now, I'm telling you this so that it's, yes, it's the worst case scenario, but maybe if you've got better water cooling or you've got better ambient temperatures. Uh, I did have the uh, cooling on and we were um, keeping things kind of relatively stringent but you know if you were using slightly worse cooling or normal ambient temperatures at home were a little bit warmer then these you'd probably want to tame down a little bit. At this point though if you uh, during the summer bit of advice for you guys at home if you are having um, like I said you're getting those issues a lot of the motherboards do have the offset that you can run and you can put up to 200 megahertz offset on the processors and just kind of leave them to do their own thing uh, and that's probably the way that I would uh, suggest that you go unless you are really into your overclocking and you like doing the balancing out and the voltage and keeping an eye on your temperatures uh, and getting really, really hands-on with stuff. But that 200 megahertz boost is beautiful for a beginner at home. So that's definitely something that you want to keep an eye on. So decent big overclocks were possible. Um, at stock, I will say, as we start to bring some of the graphs up, so we'll go in there with Blender. Now I'm starting with Blender for a reason because Blender's very positive in that the, uh, all of the processors were quicker than the other ones, so the non-XT ones out of the box. And they were also clearly quicker with a big overclock in place as well. But strangely, and it was something that AMD did keep asking me about, was the uh, Cinebench results, both 15 and 20, which I found kind of interesting, because 15 doesn't have AVX and 20 does. And normally you'll get, if you're gonna get a difference, you'll get it on one and not the other. But Cinebench, you, we did find that the XTs could be not a massive amount, but they could be a little bit behind. So they're the results that I've given you. Now, like I said, I was on Windows 2004. I was on the latest, I'll put the number underneath. You do need to make sure that you're running the latest AMD chipset driver. It was definitely running that. Um, and there was no reason with my config that I shouldn't have seen a marginal little bit of difference, but I didn't. Now it's not massive, and I don't think it's a particularly uh, horrific issue personally, because in the bulk of the stuff that we were doing, we were seeing an increase. Like I did say, it was. Blender was fine, and that's AVX as well. Now, what I would say personally is, even in the wording with AMD, they did say that the multi-threaded 
very, very stressful tests, you might not see much of a difference, if any at all. And by that, it was very, very single, low, low single digit percentages where there was, you know, one, two percent might be OK. Uh, and to be fair, you know, in the bulk of the tests, we did. The overclock, where we took control of everything ourselves and told the cores to stay at a static clock and all of that sort of stuff, then they did shine. And you can see in uh, all of the results that you have popped up so far that they were incredibly good. Now, I don't really need to go on and on about this because it is a very marginal update for AMD. They've obviously refined the process of making the processes that little bit more and they're now getting better yields. So in effect, they are making the same silicon, but they're, they've been making it a little bit better. They've got better at making it, which means that they're now getting processes that can run or they're getting silicon that can run that little bit faster, which is why we've got these. And I know a lot of you out there may be thinking to yourself, oh, I've got a 3800. Should I be buying the 3800 XT? I would say if you're going like for like, no, I wouldn't bother. If you're buying a new system, then the, the XTs would be a lovely addition to your spec list. But at the same time, if you're not going to be looking for the bleeding edge single threaded performance, then it still might actually be worth you looking at the possibility of getting a cheaper processor and then spending a little bit more money on your graphics card, whether that be uh, a red team graphics card or a green team graphics card. Um, and uh, obviously for those proper hardcore enthusiasts of you out there, the, if you've got the choice and you've got the budget, then you're clearly going to pick one of these ones. You do overclock that little bit better. You get slightly better results as well. That's my doorbell going, but I'm going to have to keep talking. Uh, but the star of the show for me, personally, was the 3600 XT. 250 pounds, six cores, 12 threads, actually managed to get over 4.6 with a decent overclock on it as well. Um, and to be fair, I think I probably, if it was me personally, long term, I'd be hoping to get this running at 4.6 with a static clock or having the uh, C states change so that the boost goes up to 4.6 with them instead. And uh, I think this is an absolute cracker. Uh, I, I am actually going to be doing a little bit more testing with this because obviously me running it with a 150 pound cooler on a 250 pound processor isn't probably going to be the sort of thing that you're going to do at home but we have to kind of um, push the limits of the processes so that we can give you the best case scenario. Uh, but I think I will have to bolt myself on some air coolers on this because I did get a lovely loot crate from Noctua this, in this past week. That's why we're now running the industrial server fans on this. Uh, and with the industrial server fans, they obviously do go to 3000 megahertz, but you don't have to run them at 3000 meg megahertz. And I'm sat beside them now and they're perfectly silent or perfectly quiet. Uh, so I think I'm gonna do some air cool testing with this because I personally think this is an absolute cracker. Uh, and it is quite late in the day for AMD to be bringing us new processors, but maybe this will help them clear the decks with the silicon that they had left so that uh, we are ready for next gen because I don't think that can be too far away. And by too far away, I don't think it's gonna be next week and I don't think it's gonna be next month but we do know it's coming and we are all excited and we all want to get testing and see if they can make the blue team cry anymore. Don't we children? Anyway, absolute little crackers, nice marginal overclock, a lot of work for not a lot of difference in reality, but in the grand scheme of things, AMD are getting the single threaded performance up and they're overclocking up as well. So that can never be a bad thing. So TTL's got a smile on his face and so should you. We like them.